Hello everyone, my name is Sengjun Cho. I am director of the Application Technology Center at Park Systems. It is my pleasure to have this opportunity to present SPM techniques for biomedical research of single cell in the post-COVID-19 era. Advances in microscopy had a profound impact on biological science. Biology has quickly developed and grow with dramatic improvement of the microscopes. I believe new scanning per microscopy technology could provide the important clues in biomedical research in the post-COVID-19 era. First, I'm going to briefly summarize the pros and cons of conventional tools for single cell research. Then we are going to take a look at the basic concept of the BioPipette-based SPN technology and its different component. And I want to introduce you to a few examples about how to utilize the new technologies in biomedical research. You cannot think of cell biology without conventional optical microscopy. Transmitted light and fluorescent microscopy are the most widely used techniques in scientific research today. Advanced contrast enhancing techniques such as differential interference contrast, DIC, phase contrast, dark field, and Hoffman modulated contrast are used for recording the dynamics of a wide spectrum of specimens over a lengthy time period. More advanced fluorescent techniques, including laser scanning confocal, spinning disk, multi-photon, and total internal reflection microscopy are used to monitor intracellular processes over time. These key innovations, especially fluorescence and confocal microscopy, have made optical microscopy one of the most powerful and versatile tools for studying modern cell biology today. However, the resolution of a conventional microscopy has light diffraction limits around 200 nanometer. In practical terms, this means that only cellular structures and objects that are at least 200 to 350 nanometer apart can be resolved by light microscopy. However, many fundamental biological processes, including invading live cells by virus, occur at the level of macromolecular complexes. These complexes are in the size range of 10 to 100 nanometer. This range is beyond the reach of conventional light microscopy. That's why people are looking for additional technical advances to overcome resolution limits. An early and powerful approach to obtain more detailed information is by using electrons instead of photons. Electron microscopy is able to achieve up to 100 times greater resolving power. However, state-of-the-art transmission and scanning electron microscopy techniques are technically demanding, relatively costly, and time-consuming. Chemical fixation and other procedures like physical sectioning make specimens vulnerable to artifacts and prevent us from observing living cells or organisms at high resolution in their undisturbed state. The atomic force microscope, also called the AFM, uses a sharp tip mounted on a flexible cantilever. Tip interacts with the sample during scanning, deflects the tip, and this produces a very high resolution images. Introduction of AFM in the late 1980s offered unprecedented resolution and gave many researchers inspiration for new research. Researchers studying biological samples were especially excited because the AFM could operate in any environment, including air, liquid, and vacuum. It could also emit soft samples. Today, AFM is being utilized in various biological applications, such as sample imaging, molecular interactions, dynamics, and even manipulations. The number of AFM publications in the life sciences is also dramatically increasing in recent times. The increasing integration of physics and biology has demanded 
the introduction of tools capable of probing the physics of biological systems, especially live cells, in a non-invasive manner. However, most SPM techniques, including AFM, possess shortcomings for studying live cells in solution. Biological cell surfaces where viruses penetrate consist of a lipid bilayer that has a complicated 3D nanostructure associated with complex and dynamic functions. The lipid bilayer separates extracellular fluid and the cytoplasm is floating buoyantly in association with the complex extracellular matrix and more rigid cytoskeleton. Therefore, the use of force in AFM can be problematic when studying live cells. The cantilever tip can distort the image due to too much interaction between the tip and sample. Images produced by the scanning probe in AFM could not only give you unique 3D topographical images that you are normally couldn't get from other optical imaging techniques, it also provides mechanical characterization data for biological samples. There is no better instrument than AFM for measuring single molecular interactions. However, if you take a careful look at AFM cell images, you will see that soft features on the cellular membrane often vanish due to the force of the AFM cantilever. Only the cytoskeleton is imaged by AFM. As you saw on the previous slide, the live cell membrane is far more complex than what AFM images show. Modern biology has advanced to a point where we now have detailed information about the structure of many molecules that make up the living cell. One of the key challenges is to now understand how the molecular components of a cell interact with one another, and how these molecules are organized in two or three dimensions to form a fully functioning living cell. To address this issue, we now have the SICM to complement existing various microscopic techniques. SICM is a non-contact SPM technique that uses a glass nanopipette as a sensitive probe based on an electrode inside. The glass pipette detects nearby surfaces via a decrease in the ion current flow through the pipette. There is no physical contact with the surface, but like many other biophysical techniques, it was difficult and hard to reproduce the same result at the first time. Now, with advanced capabilities like uh, ARS called approach retract scanning mode, I believe we have come to a point where we have a working version of SICM. The pipette in a tip diameter is typically 20 to 100 nanometer. Through this pipette opening, ions flow to generate current. The ion current through the pipette depends on a combination of the resistance of the micropipette itself and the excess resistance of the micropipette opening. When the pipette is far from the sample surface, ion current is mainly determined by the resistance of the micropipette. But if the distance between pipette and the sample surface decreases, the current begins to be affected by the excess resistance of the micropipette opening and start to decrease. A distance modulated feedback control system keeps the ion conductance constant and the sample pipette distance also remains constant. After developing the SICM, we have tested a variety of cells and we have verified the following graph. As I explained before, the cell is soft and it has different characteristics depending on its functions and purposes. The softness of the cell can be measured and distinguished by Young's modulus, and the SI unit of modulus is the Pascal. You can simply say the higher the Pascal value, the more stiff the sample. This slide explains that the AFM can image rigid cells such as bone cells and T cells. 
However, it is not reliable for soft cells such as neuronal cells in the brain. And in the case of muscle and skin cells, even though some AFN images exist, the quality is poor. And the AFN images always contain artifacts from the cantilever tip. But the SICM can image cells regardless of the cell type because it maintains non-contact conditions throughout the entire scan process. These images show the clear differences between AFM and SICM. The cells are human embryonic stem cells. You can clearly see that the tip of the AFM affects the cell surface. The AFM image looks blurry, as if the tip smeared the microvilli structures. SICM gives a crisp image, and we can distinguish the cells with an active microvilli from dormant ones. Let's look at another example to understand the difference between AFM and SICM images. These are collagen fibers. Collagen is a group of naturally occurring proteins found in animals, especially in the flesh and connective tissues of mammals. It's very soft, even more delicate than a soft polymer. If we take a careful look at the height of the collagen, it is 903 nanometer in the SICM image, and this is higher than the 639 nanometer measured in the AFA image. This is more evidence that the SICM does not apply any force, or at least significantly less force than AFM. The collagens in the AFA images also look thicker than in SICM due to tip effects of the AFM cantilever. In one of the most advanced applications, SICM can even emit suspended networks of neurons. We emit the red circled area in the inverted optical microscope picture on the left side of the screen. The round shape in the center of the optical microscope picture is a piece of red brain. And when we culture it for a long time in a petri dish, the neurons grow all around the brain tissue. So the red dust circle where SICM image was taken has a high density of the grown neuronal cells. As you can see, on the right side in the SICM image, cells connect their long arms to the other cells. So they connect to each other, forming extremely complicated network structures. SICM, especially SICM in ARS mode, can beautifully image the sample without damaging its delicate structure. This is another powerful example of non-contact imaging with SICM. These are tracheal cells. Some of the cells grow very long hair-like cilia, which could be used for transportation. We observed the cell in liquid first by SICM, and then it was imaged by SCM. It is impossible to get such images using AFM. Non-contact imaging with SICM gives us the opportunity to look at the surface of single live cells under physiological conditions with high resolution. The image shows that highly complicated small projections on the Heller cell membrane are clearly observed by SICM. This is another example of looking at the microvilli of liver cancer cells. Now we have the capability to image high resolution single cell membranes. What we can do with this capability? If some drug, virus, detergent, or toxin causes changes in the membrane, then we can detect it. In cases like this, these changes observed in this membrane are caused by fluorescent staining of the A549 cells. This slide presents sequential SICM images of C2C12 live cells. As the ion concentration in the buffer increases, if you take a look at the images, the number of small microvilli structures on the cell membrane is decreasing. At the number 11 picture, no more microvilli are visible on the cell membrane. 
In advanced applications, we can use SICM as a tool for a smart patch claim. In general, patch claim experiments are conducted blindly without knowing the surface, where the pipette end docks. However, we can see the target area with SICM before attempting patch clamp. This gives tremendous advantages to researchers. And instead of using the micro pipette with a 1 to 2 micrometer opening diameter, in which is typical for general patch clamp, in our case, we can use a nano pipette with an opening diameter of approximately 100 nanometer. This gives higher resolution for ion channel mapping. Pipette-based scanning electrochemical microscopy is also based on SICM. SICM can help us to get the topological information of sample surface, but we cannot get the electrochemical information from the sample. But adding ultra-micro electrode as a scanning probe and potential step to the SICM, then it transforms to pipette-based SECM. This setup could detect a localized high-resolution EC signal, but it is difficult to control the pipette sample distance, thus reducing the reliability of the data. In order to complement shortcomings and combine strengths of these two techniques, SICM and CCM has been introduced. There are two channels. One is to detect ion current for topography, and the other is to detect Faraday current or for EC response. The strong point of this technique is simultaneous measurement, both topography and electrochemical property. For example, we can monitor the redox response of the single live cells. We are also currently constructing prototype of optical hybrid research AFM on the national grant. This system is capable of most SPM techniques, including SICM, SCCM, and uh, also include the visual spectroscopy, Raman, uh, photoluminescence, etc. These are preliminary data of a Raman and photoluminescence the image of a molybdenum disulfide. It shows 300 nanometer resolution, uh, which is excellent resolution for normal Raman uh, spectroscopy. It also have capability of a visual spectroscopy. Different patterns of gradings can be distinguishable by visual spectroscopy. This data is measuring uh, IR-induced thermal signal on IR plus money nanostructure. I believe this optical hybrid SPM technology can produce many breakthroughs in biomedical science as well. PARC AFM solutions has been successfully implemented in semiconductor industry. PARC has won more than 160 cases of automated AFM since 2015. As a matter of course, we were selected one of most promising 20 semiconductor technology solution providers in 2018. In addition, we were selected again for one of the top 10 advanced material solution provider last year. As the cred credibility increases, the industry requires PARC to develop advanced hybrid instrument solutions. We also want to provide a biomedical research solution to human health problems. In summary, PARC Systems AFM business is growing fast and very successful. Delicate cellular and subcellular morphology in liquid can be studied by force-free or true non-contact Im liquid imaging of SICM. Patch claim integration also provides the measurement of a specified ion channel activity of live cells. Electrochemical measurement can be utilized for large research fields such as battery, surface modification, corrosion, and even life science. Development of optical hybrid AFM is currently on the way. PAC AFM will continue to evolve into more precise, versatile, and user-friendly instrument. Thank you for your attention. Hi, this is Sung Kim from PAC System. Well, thank you for inviting me. 
to the AKC Conference 2020. Today, in this session, I'm going to talk about AFM, the Atomic Burst Microscope. Here is the outline of today's talk. Uh, first of all, of course, I will present what is AFM, basic principle and how it works, and AFM parts. And then I'm going to talk about surface imaging, like contact, non-contact, and tapping mode. For the last, applications will be discussed, especially for semiconductor. And it contains roughness, complicated structure, defect review, and hybrid system between AFM and WLI. Okay, let's start with AFM. The full name of AFM is Atomic Force Microscope. And as you can see the name, the AFM is a sort of microscope. And microscope is for imaging tool. When people think about the imaging, most of them told me it is from capturing like this, like taking a picture. However, for the imaging, we have another option, the scanning. Capturing is quite simple and fast, but scanning, we can be looking at all parts of surface. And EFM is the scanning technique. Like this, Using cantilever and very sharp tip, AFM can scan the sample surface line by line and make an image with X, Y, and G information. So, I can say AFM is not like typical microscope, but it is like a probing lava. Let me show you some comparisons. Our eyes, optical microscope, and electron microscope, of course, they have advantages, but regarding resolution, sample population, and environment limits, the AFM can cover those kinds of all disadvantages. We can image with super high resolution, almost no limit of sample variation, and also we can make a three dimensional information and no limit of measurement environment. Yes, it is. The AFM is quite versatile technique. Here is the SPM family. Start from STM, the scanning tunneling microscope. AFM was invented in 1986. After that, many kinds of measurement modes were developed like this and it means we can explore electrical, mechanical, thermal, magnetic or electrochemical properties using AFM. And now some other new optional mode is being developed, maybe somewhere. Okay, next let's go to the AFM part. Basically, we have a X, Y and G scanner, and they move their own direction and collect the three dimensional information. At the bottom of G scanner, AFM cantilever is positioned, and using laser source and PSPD, we can detect the cantilever position and movement. For the resolution, samples property measurement, complicated structure, even scanning speed, the cantilever, the AFM cantilever and tip is most important part of AFM. There are many kinds of cantilevers and tips, such as different geometry, like a long or short size of cantilever, and sharp, blunt, spear, and high aspect ratio of AFM tip. And also different properties like a soft or hard material, 
and different material or coating. So if you want to measure something, your sample using AFM, you should choose proper cantilever and tip. And of course, if you have no idea about the choice, you can contact us, then we can discuss about it. We can help you for the best AFM lizard. It is a video clip to help you understand the AFM. From here, we can monitor your sample's image and also we can check the near timeline profile from the light window. Once again, loading your sample, positioning the cantilever and scanning. Then you can see the morphology of your sample like this. It's quite simple, but quite powerful. And next, I'm going to present the A fan imaging mode, contact, non contact, and tapping mode. For the first, contact mode. It is the simplest way to acquire the sample surface image. As from the mode name, the AFM tip physically contacts with the sample surface with some specific force. As I said, it is simple, but the uh, problem is it is quite easy to damage or scratch or broken the sample surface or AFM tip during the scanning. So the contact mode is generally not used solely for the topography, but contact mode is widely used for like option mode, uh, such as the lateral force or current resistance or piezo response, also thermal and mechanical property. Here is the simple procedure of Content mode. First of all, AFM tip is physically contact with the sample surface and cantilever is bent by repulsive force between tip and sample. The reflected beam, the reflected beam on PSPD goes up by bending of the cantilever and moving the G scanner up and down to maintain the bending of the cantilever. And it follows the AFM's the sample surface. Um, next is the non-contact mode. In AFM, uh, most of I mean the approximately over the 90% or over the 99% the non-contact mode is utilized for sample surface imaging. It is the most stable way to get the samples, sample topography. In contact mode, the AFM tip physically contacts sample surface, but in non-contact mode, no. The AFM tip is just positioned over the sample surface and keep the certain distance between AFM tip and sample surface. The AFM tip do not touch the sample surface so that the much less AFM tip wearing. They are also quite safe, safe for AFM tip and sample surface. The non-contact mode AFM uses some attractive force for feedback, but not solely the attractive force. Cantilever oscillation near Lazarus frequency is used for feedback instead of tapping bending of the cantilever because the bending of the cantilever by attractive force is too small, too small to detect. It is also a simple procedure of non-content mode imaging. At first, AFM cantilever oscillates mechanically at 
Lazon's frequency to detect an attractive force, attractive force change between T band sample. Moving this scanner up and down to maintain a constant distance from the sample without touching the sample surface, and it follows the sample surface, then we can get a sample's topography. The typing mode is quite similar for non-contact mode, but difference is FM tip are physically tap, tap the sample surface. The cantilever Bible lights very close to the sample surface, so it intermittently tap the sample surface. The main application of tapping mode is that we can acquire phase image to recognize sample's mechanical properties, but relatively. For example, blended or mixed polymer sample, we can see the phase difference by using tapping mode, and we can determine two or three or more than two or three different polymer lesions. But anyway, it is tap or contact based, so the FM tip has to come, has to tap or contact. It means tip end can be damaged, of course, more than non contact mode. Here is the summary. Contact mode is simple, but T band sample can be damaged due to physical contact between T band sample. Non contact mode is good for height imaging, and tapping mode is good for investigating relative surface mechanical properties by phase image. But in tapping mode, AFM can, AFM tip can be damaged. And next, let's talk about the applications. Of course, the main purpose of AFM tip measurement is the obtaining of surface topography. We can investigate this, the surface loftiness and detailed structure, such as thin layer, pinhole, or trench structure, or sometimes side wall and other complicated structure. Uh, in this manner, AFM is quite good partner for semiconductor field. Basically, the silicon wafer is the basic substrate of the semiconductor field, and homogeneous and flat surface is key feature of silicon wafer. Using AFM, the non-contact imaging, we can investigate the loftiness of whole area of 200 or 300 millimeter silicon wafer. Using automatically programmed system, the AFM imaging is performed each region and make a loftiness map like this, like those figures. Uh, from the research, we can say, okay, number one case, um, it is not homogeneous and the center area has a somewhat high loftiness value. And number two, this upper area and the downer area, downer area has difference. But number three, the number three has homogeneous loftiness value. Like this, using AFM, we can investigate the whole area of, we can investigate the loftiness of whole silicon wafer. And as I mentioned, it is automatically programmed the system, so we can pick up some specific lesion and perform the lipid images. In this example, in this figure, we pick up these three positions and operate the 10 lipid, 10 lipid images. And the research shows quite similar roughness value at each position. It means this wafer is good and also our system is quite reliable. Of course, surface loftiness measurement depends on cutting material can be studied by AFM. We have a 16 cases, different material cutting, and they show 
they show contrast at each case. The loftiness values are just one nanometer or less than one nanometer, but using AFM, we can obtain those nanometer or sometimes sub nanometer scale images. Also, we can compare size dependent surface loftiness from one micrometer by one mic micrometer to 100 micrometer by 100 micrometer, we measured 13 slots and compared. And this figure is one by one micrometer. And this one is 10 micrometer by 10 micrometer. And it is 100 micrometer by 100 micrometer size. And here is the statistics of all as dependent images. And the result is quite interesting. The imaging size of 1 by 1 to 30 by 30 micrometer shows nice trend, but except for 12 slot. But 100 micrometer by 100 micrometer size of number 2 and 12 slots shows a quite different, different properties, especially the sm small imaging area of number two slot shows a good trend, but a large scan size indicates a totally different numbers. And like this, we can explore many kinds of surface analysis using AFM. And sometimes people ask me, AFM is tip and force based scanning technique so the lizard can be changed due to the wear of AFM tip during like a continuous imaging. Of course it's true but our system, our non-contact mode enables no damage both AFM tip and sample surface. It is the lipid test and when comparing the first and 800 images we can see we can see the loftiness value that are almost identical and almost similar. So from the lizard, we can say there is no damage of AFM tip and sample surface. So you don't need to worry about the AFM tip and the changing of the changing of the lizard. As I said, flat and homogeneous surface is very important for wafer field and recognition of defect is also one of the most critical steps for fabrication of silicon wafer. Here using AFM, we can find any types of defects from wafer surface. From the reference scan, the large area System detect a pixel difference and go to the area and make a small scan. Then finally, we can see the defect. Even just a few nanometer size, we can recognize it. There are many kinds of defect types, um, different shape like round, scratch, scattered, or bump or pit type. Also, different size, like uh, from micrometer to nanometer scale. But using AFM, the effect, the automatic defect review system, we can confirm those all types of defects. And in this slide, um, those defects are due to the E beam damage by SEM. But the size of these defects is just micrometer, but height is just a few nanometer scale. It's quite small. But compared to other defect recognition technique, AFM also detects all defects successfully. Using SEM, the scanning electron microscope, of course, we can see the defects, but um, difficult to analyze the three-dimensional information. But, you know, the AFM 
is a scanning technique uh, using AFM we can get the 3D image so it means we can obtain the depth of these all kinds of defects and this is quite good advantage compared to the SEM technique in addition to defect like vision it is possible to remove the defects using AFM um, here it is the photo mask sample and if there is contaminant on the surface sample surface you can remove it just like a cleaning with an AFM tip as follow as you can see before and after images just remove the defect without no damage of surface here is the process with a layer case after finding the defect using X and Y direction scanning the defect is removed on target area but by AFM tip of course no AFM tip and separate surface damage not only the flat surface complicated structure is also our target like this nanometer scale patterns on device these samples are aslan and long and in this cases the repeated patterns are clearly displayed and the xy scale is just micrometer but the high scale is of uh, 70 or 80 nanometer scale but as you can see the lizard we can clearly see the quite quite nice surface image also different height trench structures with micrometer scale sample we can make an accurate topography of those sample and structures with the speed three dimensional information and light profile we can investigate we also tested the repeatability of height and angle measurement this slide shows the result of 100 repeat tests on three different days and as you can see this table the mean value of each test is quite similar with very small value of standard deviation it's just a 0 0.09 And also angle measurement we performed the 30 scanning the each measurement indicates a very similar angle measured and also the standard deviation is standard deviation is just 0 0.07 degree and it means the AFM system is truly reliable of course also in this case no damage or no change of AFM tip And it is the last application, but uh, something interesting trial. Generally, AFM scans a small area, but very high resolution. But in semiconductor field, the actual sample size is much more than AFM scanning size ability. So in here, we combine two techniques. One is of course AFM and the other one is WLI the white light interferometer the WLI is good technique for large scan but the lateral resolution is um, not enough for checking the tiny structure as you can see this table um, regarding the pros and cons of each technique they are quite nice pattern for surface investigation. This figure shows a little picture of AFM and WLI hybrid system. Using WLI, large scan first and then small scanning by AFM. The one by one, step by step. Here is the one example of 
image. Here's the one example of AFM and WLI hybrid system. The millimeter scale imaging by WLI, uh, we can confirm the overall structure of zember surface. And then micro or nanometer scale image, nanometer scale imaging by AFM. So we can see the some detailed structure of some specific lesion. Okay, this is my last slide. And to sum up, AFM can measure height image with high resolution. Also, AFM is used for various dimensional nanomethodology and semiconductor fat, such as roughness measurement, complicated structure, defect review, and combining techniques. Now, more AFM, more AFM applications for semiconductor industry are currently developing. And of course, we will continue to evolve into more precise, versatile, and user-friendly instrument. Thank you, thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, please contact us. Thank you.